Good evening viewers and welcome to first time of TTN Up Life in this Friday. I am Kayla Tularula. And this all stories for today. Amazon's hardware head confirms layoffs have started, read the memo. China's Tencent starts new round of layoffs sources. Smart motorways, system technology failed for hours, data shows. Amazon said it is consolidating some teams and programs in its devices arm after a deep set of review of the business. Amazon began layoffs on Wednesday of employees working at its devices division, hardware head Dave Limp confirmed in a memo. The e-commerce giant said it is consolidating some teams and programs in its devices arm after a deep set of review of the business. It pains me to have to deliver this news as we know we will lose talented Amazonians from the devices and services org as a result, Limp said. While I know this news is tough to digest, I do want to emphasize that the devices and services organization remains an important area of investment for Amazon, and we will continue to invent on behalf of our customers. The Momo did not provide any details on the extent of layoffs, but the job cuts come at a time when the company traditionally hires more workers before the busy holiday season. New York Times Monday reported that Amazon plans to lay off as many as 10,000 employees across the company, mostly in its devices, retail and human resources divisions. The cuts would be the largest in the company's history. Amazon had more than 1.6 million full-time and part-time employees as of December 31st last year. Amazon began notifying its employees of layoffs yesterday. Several members who were laid off by Amazon have taken to LinkedIn to share their layoff stories. Most members were part of the company's Alexa and cloud gaming divisions. In cases where employees cannot find a new role within the company, we will support the transition with a package that includes a separation payment, transitional benefits, and external job placement support, the memo added. Thousands of workers have recently been laid off by big and small tech companies in recent months. Last week, Facebook's parent company Meta announced it laid off 11,000 of its employees, making the most significant cuts in the social media giant's history. Twitter has also sacked half of its 7,500-strong workforce as the new owner Elon Musk wants to overhaul the troubled social media company. China's technology sector continues to feel the effects of a regulatory crackdown and zero-covid measures Chinese tech giant Tencent Holdings, 0700.hk, has begun a new round of job cuts targeted at its video streaming, gaming and cloud businesses, four sources close to the matter said. The sources said the layoffs affect three out of Tencent's six business divisions, platform and content, PCG, which comprises of its video and news platforms, its gaming-focused interactive entertainment department, IEG, and Cloud and Smart Industries Group, CSIG. Two of the sources said some staff in IEG were informed last week they were being laid off. Tencent declined to comment. Reuters was not able to establish the scale of the job losses. China's technology sector continues to feel the effects of a regulatory crackdown and headwinds from zero-covid measures that have slowed the broader economy. Tencent already cut jobs earlier this year, alongside peers, including Alibaba Group, 9988.hk, and smaller Chinese tech companies such as Xia Hongshou. In August, Tencent disclosed its employee numbers fell to 110,715 by the end of June from 116,213 in March. Reef and TIFF data shows analysts expect Tencent to report flat revenues or a small contraction on Wednesday when it publishes third quarter results. Tencent management have said they are focused on cutting costs and have shuttered non-core businesses in certain areas, including online education, e-commerce, and game live streaming. The Shenzhen-based company is eyeing global expansion to offset slowing growth in China. Reuters reported last month Tencent is resetting its M&A strategy to put more focus on buying majority stakes mainly in overseas gaming companies. Several U.S. tech employers, including Facebook parent Meta Platforms, Meta.o, Intel Corp, INTC.o, and Twitter have also laid off thousands of workers in recent weeks. The Redmi A1 Plus offers stock Android at an affordable price of under 9,000 rupees. But how does this translate into performance? Read our full review of the Redmi A1 Plus. It has been a while since I've reviewed a budget phone, meaning a device that is priced under 10,000 rupees. So, when the Redmi A1 Plus turned up for review I was intrigued to see how this would perform. 
This is unlike the other Redmi Note phones that I typically review. For one, the Redmi A1 Plus does not come with MIUI which is typically seen on most phones from the brand. Instead, it runs Android Go 12 a version of Android which is optimized and meant for phones with less RAM and storage. The Redmi A1 Plus also sports an old micro USB port for charging. It is also quite affordable starting at 7,499 rupees. But is that enough to justify getting the Redmi A1 Plus? Here's my review. Redmi A1 Plus specifications, 6.52 inch LCD display with 720p resolution Mediatek Helio A22 processor with 2GB or 3GB RAM and 32GB storage 5000 mAh battery 8MP dual AI camera plus 5MP front camera Android Go Edition. Redmi A1 Plus price in India, 2GB RAM and 32GB at 7,499 rupees and 3GB RAM and 32GB storage at 8,499 rupees. Redmi A1 Plus review, what's good? The Redmi A1 Plus might be a budget phone, but it doesn't compromise on looks. The light green color I got for review looks quite nice and does make this device stand out. The phone has a textured back. I could not see any smudges or chipping of the color during my usage. It comes with a fingerprint sensor at the back, which works to unlock the device quickly. The phone has a dedicated micro SD card slot, up to 512 GB support, and two nano SIM slots. So, if you are one of those who rely on an SD card for their phone, the Redmi A1 Plus should keep you happy. This is especially important given the onboard storage is limited to 32 GB. The phone has a big 6.52 inch display, which is adequate when used indoors. However, in bright outdoors, the display is not enough and sometimes I struggled to see what was on the screen. For daily usage though, the Redmi A1 Plus display works well. The Redmi A1 Plus comes with stock Android and the advantage is that this is one of the few budget phones without bloatware from MIUI. Setting up the phone is easy, and the number of pre-installed apps is limited. It comes with Facebook Lite as well, though I managed to run the full-fledged Facebook app on this without any major hiccups. Apps like Netflix and YouTube worked fine too. The phone gets a 5000 mAh battery, which will easily last more than a day for most users. However, the big battery still relies on a micro USB charger, so make sure you carry this with you when traveling. Finding a micro USB charger might be a challenge these days given most other phones have switched to Type-C charging. It will take more than 3 hours to get this to a full charge given the 10 Toare Sapkruen Nekre Yarkdai, Reb Pai Su Ken Na Ka. The technology behind smart motorway systems did not work for 21 hours during September, the BBC can reveal. Cameras and radar alert a control room to vehicles which have stopped in live lanes with overhead signs, then being used to tell drivers about issues. However, new data shows the system was not functioning for 3% of operational hours in September, with an outage in October lasting nearly 4 hours. National Highways said an independent investigation was underway. At the end of 2020 there were 369 miles of smart motorways in England, including 168 miles without a hard shoulder. The controlled roads are on the M1 in Yorkshire, the East Midlands, and Hertfordshire, along with parts of the M25 in London. There are also stretches of smart motorway in the West Midlands and Northwest. The Technology is designed to allow lanes to be closed using the signs upstream of incidents, such as live lane breakdowns. Computer failures have meant the software to control the signs has not worked properly. One failure in October lasted for hours, prompting an apology from National Highways. Claire Mercer, from Rotherham, has campaigned against the use of smart motorways since her husband's death. On a stretch of motorway near Sheffield in 2019, she said she had repeatedly received messages from staff working for National Highways outlining failures in the system. It was terrifying. I was sat here getting email after email saying we haven't got any cameras. We can't see what we're doing, it's still not working and it's just sickening. You're just sat here expecting to hear about some terrible catastrophe and there's absolutely nothing you can do. Sarah Champion, Labour MP for Rotherham Central and Mrs Mercer's MP said drivers were playing roulette every time they drove on the smart sections of motorways. We believed national highways when they said the IT would be there to save us when they took away the hard shoulder, she said. The IT isn't working. We have data that 
proves for between 2% and 10% of the time the equipment that is meant to alert us to disaster doesn't work. And that when you think about the number of journeys that we're making up and down on the M1 on our stretch is really, really chilling. National Highways told the BBC the system was working as intended for 97% of the time in September. Duncan Smith, Executive Director for Operations at National Highways, said safety remained their number one priority. We have robust and well-rehearsed mitigation measures in place to deal with any operational challenges facing our network, including those related to technology and COVID-19 rebound may be more common in people who take Paxlovid, early study suggests. Cases of COVID-19 rebound following treatment with the antiviral medication Paxlovid, where infections rev back up again after people complete their five-day course of the medication, appear to be at least twice as common as doctors previously knew, a new study suggests. COVID-19 rebound also seems to be more common in people who take Paxlovid compared with those who don't take the antiviral although it can happen in other circumstance. In the past few months, instances of COVID-19 rebound have peppered headlines. President Joe Biden, First Lady Jill Biden, as well as Dr. Anthony Fossey, who advises the President on Pandemic Strategy and Dr. Rochelle Walensky, Director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, have all revealed that their COVID-19 infections returned after they finished taking Paxlovid. Worst. Sequel. Ever quipped comedian Stephen Colbert on Twitter after his rebound case in May. These high-profile cases have led to social media speculation that the rebound might not be as infrequent as some studies have concluded. So far, studies have suggested that around 5% of people who take Paxlovid will experience a rebound. Understanding rebound in June, Pfizer, the company that manufactures Paxlovid, published an analysis of data from the drug's clinical trials showing that COVID-19 infections came back both in the group that got placebo pills and those who took Paxlovid, somewhere between 2% and 7% of the time. That study found rebound happened about twice as frequently in people taking Paxlovid as in those who took the placebo. Another study in June, led by researchers at the Mayo Clinic, reported that only four patients out of 483, less than 1%, who took Paxlovid experienced a return of their COVID-19 symptoms after treatment. Most studies of rebound have had a significant weakness, however, they reviewed patient records, looking back in time, to count cases that recur. That approach likely undercounts the true number who experience this phenomenon because it misses people who rebound at home, and either don't have any symptoms with their rebound, they just test positive again on a rapid test, or have symptoms so mild they don't feel the need to go back to a doctor. The new study, led by researchers at Scripps Research Translational Institute and the telehealth company EAMED, has an important advantage in this regard. It is one of the first to follow COVID-19 patients forward in time to measure cases that come back. The study included 170 patients who came to EAMED for testing and who were deemed by their doctors to be eligible to take Paxlovid because they were at high risk for developing severe symptoms from COVID-19. They were invited to join the study only after they decided whether they wanted to take Paxlovid, said lead study author Dr. Jay Pundit, who is director of digital medicine at Scripps, in an interview with CNN. We didn't want to bias or influence their decision to take Paxlovid or not, Pundit said. Early results suggest rebound may not be rare. The study also has some important limitations that make its conclusions imprecise. It is just getting started, so these first results come from a relatively small group of the first patients enrolled, 127 who took the drug Paxlovid and 43 people who were eligible to take it but declined. Those 43 people served as a comparison group. The study doesn't have enough statistical power to tell whether the differences observed between the two groups were due to chance or the treatment. Researchers say they eventually hope to enroll a total of 800 people, a study size that should yield clearer answers. After people agreed to participate in the study, they were shipped a kit with 12 rapid home tests. They were advised to test every other day. They were also asked to answer questions about their symptoms. Among the 127 who took Paxlovid, about 14% saw their viral loads climb again after treatment. This group tested positive for COVID-19, tested negative after completing their five-day course of Paxlovid, and then tested positive again a few days later. 
About 19% saw their symptoms return after they completed their Paxlovid treatment although they may not have tested positive again. Some of the people in the comparison group also experienced rebound, though it appeared to be less common for these patients compared to the group that took Paxlovid. About 9% of the 43 people in this group tested positive again after initially clearing the infection and about 7% of the reported that their symptoms returned. So far, Pundit said, the study is showing two main things, as many have suspected, COVID-19 rebound appears to be more common than previous research has suggested, rebound can also happen whether or not you take Paxlovid. The incidence rates reported by previous studies have had huge varying numbers, and most of them tend to be in the single digits, Pundit said. The message really is we're seeing higher numbers of incidence, he said. The study was published as a preprint, ahead of peer review. Researchers who were not involved in the study agreed that it was on the right track and said the numbers it is gathering would firm up over time. It should also help answer the question of whether rebound is really more common after people take Paxlovid. There is an indication that symptomatic rebound is more frequent in Paxlovid-treated participants than in untreated controls, but larger numbers are needed to draw confident conclusions, said Dr. Michael Charnas, chief of staff for the VA Boston Healthcare System. Charnas has been documenting cases of Paxlovid rebound, including his own. More testing planned pundit says they will continue to follow study participants and plan additional rounds of tests to try to answer other lingering questions like why does rebound happen in the first place, and is it possible to avoid rebound by adjusting the dosage or duration of treatment? Does rebound have anything to do with long COVID? Right now, there's no consensus about what should be done in cases of rebound. At least one study has documented a case of a person with rebound COVID-19 who took Paxlovid and passed the infection to an infant. Typically, rebound cases are mild and resolve within a few days. Fear of a rebound shouldn't keep anyone from taking the medication in the first place, Pundit says. There is a lot of underprescription of Paxlovid. We know it reduces hospitalization rates, reduces progression of symptoms, we know that, and we don't want to fuel the fire of underprescription. Pundit says, in clinical trials, Paxlovid was nearly 90% effective at preventing hospitalizations and deaths in high-risk patients. As the virus evolves to beat other types of treatments, Paxlovid has continued to work. By the same token, Pundit says, the uncertainty about rebound is almost certainly making people hesitant to use the drug. Studying rebound, he says, should shed important light on the problem and help to arm people with knowledge. We need to understand that one of the causes for underprescription is this misunderstanding of what the incidence rates really are, he said. It's something we need to look at. Health systems make a play for women. In Charlotte, more female-focused clinics open as hospitals seek to tap the women's market. The term women's health tends to conjure images of gynecology offices, hospital maternity centers or other facilities focused on women's reproductive health. But at the Novant Health Women's Center in Charlotte's South Park area, you can find neurology, psychiatry, pulmonary and cardiology clinics tailored specifically to women. The center also includes traditional women's services such as a sexual health clinic, an OBGYN practice, breastfeeding support, and mammography, all housed in a spa-like setting with soft white light fixtures with undulating curves, eye-catching artwork, and other feminine decor. Meanwhile, Charlotte's other healthcare giant, Atrium Health, recently announced its plan to open its own suite of women's health services just down the road, in a space formerly occupied by an Atrium urgent care center. The fact that the two competing healthcare giants will soon offer health services targeted at women within a mile of each other underscores the importance of this market, both in Charlotte and across the state, said William Brandon, a professor emeritus of health policy at UNC Charlotte. The clinical differences between men and women are now much more widely recognized, Brandon said, and that certainly makes for a great marketing niche. While the trend may serve a hospital's marketing goals, experts say it's also an important and long overdue recognition of the many ways that women's health needs differ from men's. A. One-stop shop for women. The 36,000-square-foot Novant Women's Center, which opened in 2020, is designed to be an integrated center where physicians of different disciplines can work together to meet a woman's health needs, said Stephanie Appling, Women and Children's Service Line Leader for Novant Health. The Women's Center occupies the fourth floor of a larger medical building. 
Appling hopes to expand to other floors, perhaps by adding women's dermatology and family practice clinics. Appling said she wants the center to be a one-stop shop where women at different life stages can access November 17, 2022 Health News Hub Hartford Healthcare Today announced a long-term partnership with Google Cloud to accelerate Hartford Healthcare's digital transformation and advance on-demand, personalized and coordinated care for patients. Hartford Healthcare will work with Google Cloud to unlock the potential of health data, often hidden in unstructured data and increasingly complex patient records. Using the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning from Google Cloud's healthcare data engine, HDE, and the recently announced HDE accelerators, Hartford Healthcare will make its healthcare data more accessible and actionable. The company will also leverage contact center AI for digital patient engagement and other Google Cloud technologies to transform care delivery and access. Hartford Healthcare's transformation has five goals, increase access to care by enabling more personalized patient experiences, anticipating patients' needs and making the right care just one click or one call away, empower clinicians and colleagues with data-driven insights and tools, empowering them with contextually relevant information about each patient, enhance health outcomes for all, by using data to improve the health of underserved individuals, individually and across entire patient populations. Accelerate and bolster health innovation, discovering previously undetected patterns in health data, and using insights to guide research. Recover valuable time for caregivers, by increasing the speed and accuracy of data needed for health decision making. Creating world class. Care requires world class partners. We are exceptionally proud to stand with Google Cloud and work together to make seamless, personalized care a reality for patients said Jeffrey A. Flax, President and Chief Executive Officer of Hartford HealthCare. With Google Cloud's technology, Hartford HealthCare will adopt better digital solutions that make care accessible for all. Google Cloud recognizes Hartford HealthCare's work to be a pace leader in healthcare and we are excited to collaborate to solve the industry's greatest challenges, including access to care, said Ashima Gupta, Global Director for Healthcare Strategy and Solutions for Google Cloud. It is our shared vision to work together to identify the talents, tools, technologies, and solutions that are needed to deliver a new paradigm of health and wellness delivery. This work will bring together Hartford HealthCare's excellence in patient care with Google Cloud's machine learning and AI capabilities to unlock the truly transformative power of interoperable longitudinal patient rec. And that's all for TTN Up Life this Friday. Follow our program every Friday at 7 p.m. on YouTube channel. TTN World. And follow all news on Facebook, TTN News. Including Twitter and Instagram of TTN World. And follow every movement at TikTok and Likey at TTN World Channel. And can watch TTN World via site, Infosit, Good TV, CSAT Visions, TISAT Channel 112, GMMZAT Channel 75, 3 BB Giga TV, Channel 94, Ace Play Channel 640, and MV Box. Including apps MVTV, MV Hub Plus, Looks TV, and True ID. Tonight I'm Kayla Tularula. Thank you for watching, and have a nice weekend. Goodbye for now and see you again.